We have a first look at Way of the Hunter gameplay very shortly before it releases. Credit for this goes to Squirrel. I'm going to leave the video linked in the description because it's a 52 minute video. So if you want some in-depth gameplay, check this video out. We're just going to flick through it, have a look at some of the features and see exactly what the game is all about. So without further ado, let's get into it. Straight away, this game has incredible graphics. I know the gameplay is what matters. I don't want it to be like, what was it? Hunter Call of the Wild or whatever that game was called. That game was, in my opinion, more frustrating than anything. I don't know if it's because of the way I was playing or anything like that, but it would take like 45 minutes to come across an animal. And I get that's the whole point of a hunter and the simulation of it. You have to take your time. You're not going to find an abundance of animals. But when you're playing a video game, having something that long does like get frustrating really quickly. But the graphics for this, they do look really, really good. And I'm just hoping the gameplay does follow. Squirrel does talk in this video, so I've muted it. I'm going to listen to it and then I'll come back like for uh, different parts. This game's been built on Unreal Engine 4. So imagine if they had the technology of UE5. Imagine how much like crisper and how much nicer this game would look. It already looks good on Unreal Engine 4. Okay, next part. Very interesting. You can rest in the game and it's free of charge. There's no like cost to sleep in or anything like that. However, there are only certain parts of the game, these little campsite areas. There are hunting lodges as well, where you're actually allowed to sleep. So that's really interesting. If you have a look, it's nighttime, but there is a flashlight. The animals can't be spooked by this light. However, there's no like night vision or anything like that in the form of goggles or anything. So nighttime hunting is going to be quite difficult because you'll see the difference. Like It doesn't look too bad, but if you're trying to focus on an animal, they've got dark fur or something like that, it's going to be quite tough nighttime hunting. There is a scope. There is one that has... It looks a bit night vision based, although it doesn't seem to make much of a difference. Okay, so we've got our first look at the map, and you can see it's pretty big. You've got places like Small Paws, Cottonwood, Black Fox Range. There are two maps at the start of the game, and they are about 120 kilometers squared. So it's a, roughly a 12 by 10. The DLC maps, when they're released, will be about an 8x8. So, relatively big DLC maps as well. So, there you go. Way of the Hunter. Squirrel has said that he's been able to see animals at around 600 meters away. So, the draw distance is really, really good. It's actually further than Hunter Call of the Wild. So, if you're going for those long distance, like completely silent kills, you're nowhere near the animal. That's going to be perfect. So, we're going to jump into some of the different equipment and stuff. There is a like proper story to this game as well. This storage area is going to be the stuff that you have on your character at that current time. And then we're going to get a brief look at the shop. And you will see you've got a few different weapons that you can purchase. You'll see here with the Remington 783, you can see the action, the mag capacity, the caliber, and also the hunting tier. There's another thing to note as well. When you're progressing through the story... Every time you go back to your storage, you will replenish your ammo. So you essentially have unlimited ammo. It's nothing to worry about. But you also get a car in this game. You can choose one of the three off-road vehicles that you can see on screen. You can drive around, go to different areas, hunt different animals. And another thing to note about the vehicles is when you go to the back of the Jeep, it will actually replenish your ammo as well. At the launch of the game, there are going to be 10 different rifles and three shotguns. There's no bows or anything like that. I'm not sure if they will come as DLC, but I would say 10 different rifles to use when you're out hunting animals. It's a decent amount of variety. Even better, the developers have said that they're going to work on bows. It's just not going to be in the game at launch. The weapon you can see on screen now is the highest hunting tier weapon, hunting tier 6. It uses a 338 Lapua mag, 3 mag capacities, it's a bolt action. And this rifle is strong enough to take down elk, moose, and different animals like that. The big, beefy game. Then moving into the gear tab of the shop, you can see there are different types of binoculars. You can get different coolers. You've also got lens quality, lens size, and the magnification. 
Moving into the attachments part of the shop, you can see there are a couple of just like your standard red dots and stuff. Then you've got some bigger, beefier, long range actual like rifle scopes. If you have a look on screen now, the boundaries tab for the shop, these are your private passes. You'll see that they cost 4,500 in-game currency each. At the moment, at least for launch, there is no like real money purchases. And then if we take a look at the map here, Falls Reservoir, you are allowed to still go to the areas without the pass. So there's no restriction. You're not limited to certain areas of the game. It's just if you do not own the private pass, whatever game you kill, you are not allowed to do anything with it. So you're just shooting to kill the animals. If you purchase a private pass to Falls Reservoir, you can then harvest the meat and stuff off the animals. You can do everything that you need to do with that animal to make money and progress in the game. So the private passes are needed for the regions, but you can still explore them and kill things in the region without the pass. You just won't earn any progression from it. Squirrels just mentioned that for every deer that you harvest, you're going to get about 500 money. So it's not going to take you too long to save up and get these passes. And I noticed that whilst the squirrel was going through the menus and everything, there is also a photo mode in this game for those of you interested in it. That is very interesting. And hearing that alone has got me even more excited for this game. So basically, if we quickly flick back a few seconds, you'll see the map and you have the icons for the different animals. And as an example, this one up here is a mule deer. If there are like low health, low rating deer in that area, if you kill them, it's going to actually like better the quality of the population of the deer. And then if there's an area where there's just a load of trophy game, you kill it all, you're actually going to lower the grade of the population in that area. So you have to be a little bit picky. You can't just go around and shoot everything on site. You've got to think about the population of the animals and figure out if it's actually worth killing the animal there and then or just waiting around and... Like maybe go to a different area, kill the same animal, but in a different area where the population isn't that high of a grade. And I think that's really, really interesting. I like the way they've done that. Looking at the objectives tab, you'll see the different objectives for the story. There's other tasks and stuff as well. You're not limited to do just this stuff. You can go out and explore completely free roam and do whatever you want to do. However, there's obviously a better sense of progression when you are doing the story. And as well as all of this, a story, tasks, like different bits of detail and in-depth with the population. There's a shop with loads of weapons and things like that. As well as all of that, you do have multiplayer co-op. And the amount of players in that session will depend on your platform. Squirrel has mentioned from what he heard is four player co-op on PC, three on PlayStation and two on Xbox. I don't know why that would be a thing, but that's what Squirrel heard. Looking at this screen here back in the storage, You'll see that there is a deer grunt caller. Squirrel is taking on an objective to take down five low fitness male deer. And if you have a look at the bottom right, you have different sounds that come out of this caller. You've got doe grunt, young buck grunt, and trophy buck grunt. So you can attract females, low fitness males, and high fitness males. What you need to do, however, is you need to manage to upgrade this caller. And when you get it to like a two star caller, you can then attract the low fitness males. There's different perks and stuff to these callers so that you can try and specify more the like specific type of animal you're going for. Then back to the map, if you have a look, there are different drinking areas, there are resting areas, there are eating areas. So it kind of shows you the rough sort of location depending on time of day and stuff of where the animals are going to be. And I really like that because as I said, Hunter Call of the Wild it was frustrating to get to grips with, and sometimes it took a very, very long time to actually find the animals that you were looking for. Then if you have a look at the deer that's been selected here, there's only an eating area. You actually have to manually discover these different locations. So it's not just you find an animal that's pinpointed on your map and you're going to know exactly where it eats, drinks, and rests. You're going to have to go out and actually explore to basically study the animals and figure out what they get up to, what times of day and things like that. And that's going to make your experience better as you progress. Then you have an encyclopedia. And when you find three different areas, as an example, you find two different areas where mule deer will drink and you find one where they will rest. Once you found three different areas where mule deer will hang out, it will fill in different parts of your encyclopedia so that you can understand more about the deer. 
So taking a look here, you can see everything about the mule deer. So you can see the hunting tier 5, recommended hit energy, 1576 to 3783. But then you actually have their like schedule throughout the day. So midnight, they're sleeping. Five, they go and eat. Nine, they go and drink. So it gives you a rough sort of idea as to when to head to those sort of areas. You'll see the different weights for the animals as well. So a young mule deer will be aged between one and three, weigh 50 to 90 kilos for a male, 40 to 60 for a female. You'll also see there grassland, lowland forest, highland forest. That's their different habitats. Trophy type is the antlers. And then the trophy ranges 460 to 500 is five star. So we're going to see some gameplay in a moment of hunting mule deer. In terms of the sleeping, you can do it as many times as you want. There is not a single restriction to the sleeping. And then if you see this P sign that is near a hunting lodge or something like that where there's road, this is where you can call in your car. A really good feature they put into this game is, as an example, this is the starter map. You then have Transylvania. When you go from map to map, you take all of your equipment with you. The equipment in the game is tied to your character, not to the map that you're playing on. Now, here's a feature not everyone is going to be happy with. If you look at the bottom right, you can see the wind direction. You can see your stance. In Way of the Hunter, you cannot see a noise indicator. You don't know how noisy you are being, but your noise will scare animals off. You can pause the game, you can look at the map, and that will leave a pink trail in the direction of the wind, and that is your scent, so animals will be able to pick that up. However, when it comes to how much noise you are making when you're moving around, you just have to judge it by what you can hear in the game itself. There's nothing to tell you if you're being too noisy, there's nothing to indicate whatsoever how much noise you are making. I think it's a good feature. It adds to the depth of the game and just how realistic it is. However, I know some people are going to get frustrated that they cannot see it. But that's just something the developers have decided to do. Let's continue. You've got three different speeds to your stance. So when you're walking, you've got a sprint and then a slow walk. When you're crouched, you've got like a faster, more sped up crouch. Then you have a slowed down one as well. It's going to be important to learn how to judge the distance that you need to be away from the animal before you start scaring it and how much noise you can make around the animals. That's my bad. You've got three walking speeds. You've got two crouchings. You've got your normal crouch and then you've got your slow down crouch. Then you also have a prone stance as well. So it goes three, two, one, standing, crouching, laying. It's a pre-release version of the game. However, Squirrel has just pointed out there is no key mapping whatsoever on PC. Not sure if it will be in there when the game launches, but when Squirrel was playing, you could not change your keybinds, you could not even see which controls were which. You got a little layout of the controller if you're using an Xbox or a PlayStation controller, but when it comes to keyboard and mouse, you have absolutely no idea you have to figure the buttons out for yourself. I'm not sure if they will change it. I believe it will be something they will add if not at launch, something within the first couple of days of release, because I know that's going to be a big put off for a lot of players. Way of the Hunter has four different difficulty settings, and each one will basically make animals a lot more scared, and it depends on which difficulty, how tough the game's going to be. So it says here, animal senses are low for inexperienced players, the challenge of the game will be much lower. You can select the map settings before you go into a game. If you go to the main menu, select territory, then at the bottom you'll see a prompt and that will let you change your difficulty. So what you should be doing, especially playing the higher difficulties as Squirrel has mentioned in this video, is make sure you are placing exploration markers. Go to your map, place a marker. If you're going to the eating grounds for an animal, place a marker there so that you know the rough sort of idea so that you don't scare the animals away. So you've got your three basic settings. You've essentially got easy, normal, hard, where the animal senses are low, medium, high. Then you've got ranger, which the animal senses are high. But as you'll see, the scope shooting information, the binocular identification, interactions highlighting animal signs identification, all off. This difficulty provides the most realistic hunting experience. All the extra info provided will be hidden. So with the need zones for the rest in the drink and the eating, it's not a guarantee that the animals will be there at any point during that day. You'll have little indicators to say it's a, a rare feeding zone or it's an often feeding zone, but that still doesn't mean that the animal's going to turn up at the right time on the right day. It's just something you have to get used to. You're hunting for animals. They're not going to be 100% consistent. 
Another thing is, if you spook an animal, it will run like 500 meters away. You are going to have to track them down again. So it's going to be more rewarding if you do take your time, your patience, you pay attention to the distance away from the animal and make sure you do not spook them. And what I'm going to do is let this little gameplay sequence actually play out. You'll hear Squirrel talking. So I've just spotted some deer um, down here. By the way, these, um, these deer stands, uh, there are no deployable objects in the game. You can't put tents down and sleep and you can't put these down. They're none to buy. They're just on the map and you just go and find them. That was my original marker there. Um, which I'll now press space key to remove. Um, but I've just spotted some down here. Now, the first thing I do is look at the wind, um, you know, because if it's blowing from behind, then I'm, I'm going to have to relocate, basically. But the wind's in our favor. If you press the Q key, see bottom left, it says Hunter Sense. Press the Q key. You go into Hunter Sense mode. You can see you get this, like, vignette around the, around the screen. And you can you see that there out the corner of your eye? You get these little sounds that you can use to locate animals. Um, that one there is a pheasant down there. He's in a calm state, uh, and it's uh, 100 meters away. You'll often get them where you can hear foxes, badgers, sometimes uh, deer. But I can see there's, there's a pack of deer over there. So I'm just going to press X. And that will drop a, um, a waypoint down. So I know they're over here. There's probably another feed zone right there. So we're going to start moving in. Now these guys are like 220 meters away, so I've seen some females. I've not yet seen anything else. Now if you press the Q key, you then turn on your hunter sense again in binocular mode. You can then get more information. Now this is the stuff if you're playing on the next level of difficulty, you don't get this. Uh, this is on hunter mode, hunter difficulty and below. But there's an adult male there. Sorry, an adult female there a whole bunch of females. I can't see the male. There's always a male with them, but I can't see it yet. But, we're getting close, so press Q and get rid of that vignette. I'm going to crouch now. And uh, what I'll do is I'll start closing in. So when I'm closing in, I'm kind of looking at the wind. Is that a problem? No. I'm looking at my visibility. Where am I planning to go to? What kind of angle am I going to take my shot from? You don't want a frontal shot. It can be very tricky, particularly if they're eating. Um, because the ideal shot is the heart and the lungs like that's really what you're going for and when we take a shot in a minute and we harvest the animal you'll see the anatomy and you really need to look at the anatomy of each animal and study where best to hit it and what angle to hit it from because if you're at the wrong angle you know its leg will be in the way its shoulder will be in the way you're not going to get a clean kill out of it so we're, we're getting close now very very close this is well within kill range for our rifle but I still can't see any male right now. We have got some cover here, but we're kind of losing cover. I must, I'm thinking the male is perhaps over there somewhere. On the left, behind that tree. If indeed there is a male with them, there usually is. They're quite calm at the moment. If I was to stand up and walk, there's a good chance I'd spook them. 130 meters is very close <clears throat> the thing is if you get too close the the bullet when it hits them will actually have too much energy um, and what that does is it just dis <clears throat> it destroys a lot of meat uh, and therefore you get paid less in the game because the way the, the way the game kind of translates it is when you kill you sell the meat to a restaurant and the more damage you do to it the less they're gonna pay you right uh, it also takes into account how quickly the animal was killed and how cleanly it was killed, how ethically it was killed. I can't see the male. I think what we might have to do, just so I can show you, you know, a kill, is we might have to um, take one of the females out. Is that, is that the male there? I think he's there. I think that's him. Yeah, there you go. So one-star trophy male... Um, mule deer who just lay down now let's show you something oh there's another noise there you see that we need to get this rifle here which is the tier 5 rifle and this is the one with the um, 15 scope on it so this is the night the night vision one it's plenty if I 
press the Q key, when I'm looking at this, if I press the Q key, I get more information again after a few seconds. There you go, see that? So it tells us how far away it is and how much energy the bullet will have when it hits. Now, there's also zeroing, so this is 127 meters away, so I'm going to zero for, you can either do 150 and aim a little bit lower, or I'll do 100 and aim very, very slightly higher. At this distance, the bullet won't drop very much. But that is definitely the male. But you can see that it's a young male. I think this is a young male as well, if I'm honest. No, it's not. This is the female. So the female's in the way now. Notice how the scope leans as you move across. So this, this is a decent shot right here. If you can get that. If it stands up again. Um, the, in terms of sway... There is a lot less sway when you're lying down or crouching. You can see the sway here, but when you hold the shift, it will get a slight zoom. He holds his breath and, it, and he holds the, um, the sway a bit better. So we'll just wait for him to get up and we'll aim for the heart and lungs and see if we can get a kill. I don't want to get any closer than this. There he goes. So, now I like to just watch and see what happens. Okay, he's dropped straight away, which probably means a heart kill. Now, look at the way the animals scatter. It's, it's pretty well done, the way they scatter and run away. Look at all the noises now with Hunter Sense turned on. They're all spooked. They're all running away. They're panicking slightly, but they're still moving as a pack. And it is quite interesting you, when you watch that stuff. I would argue that the way it works is better than Call of the Wild. I think they, the way they're spooked, the way they run, but stay together, the way they don't glitch, because in Call of the Wild they tend to teleport around and glitch a lot. Um, I think this just handles it better. Um, but what I'll show you now is the, um, the way that we track the body, although in this instance there's not really going to be much to track. Incidentally, after you've taken a shot, I recommend you press the X key. When you're in the scope like that, and you, you kill something, just press the X key and put that marker down and it'll give you a nice waypoint to, uh, to go to to pick up the trail. Now, you don't have a little tablet like Call of the Wild. Um, I found with Call of the Wild, when you start playing the game, it's really, really difficult to track animals, even with the tablet, because you don't have any skills. Uh, and we'll talk about skills in a second. With this, you track them all the same. You press the Q key and you start looking around. You see those little gold zones there? So that's a need zone. So first thing I'm going to do is go over to this highlighted area, and this is a need zone. So if I press E to analyze, mule deer eats often, right? So I've just found another eating zone, and on the map now, if I press space key on that, I've now got an eating zone here and an eating zone here. So if they're not there, they might be there, which is great. Now also when you've got the Q, Q key highlighted, it will show things like this which is looks fresh so we know that there's there's been mule deer here recently you'll also see things like this which are the tracks so you can follow mule deer, mule deer tracks they're not like call the wild you won't see loads of them scattered you'll just see the odd one it is a lot more difficult to track animals in this than call of the wild you do need a bit more skill and experience so anyway what you would normally look for ignore this need zone normally what you'd look for is this you press e to analyze and you you look at what it says so it says that the color of blood is pink. That means we didn't hit anything in the gut. If you hit the gut, it'll tend to be a bit green as well. The amount of blood, lots of blood. That means we hit something critical. Air bubbles, that's a sign of it hitting a lung. So if you see air bubbles, you've probably hit a lung. If you've hit a lung or there's a lot of blood, it's going to die. And then the time to expire is quite quick. In other words, we need to get to the animal fairly quickly to get a good harvest out of it. Now, in this instance, it just staggered forward and dropped. Normally, there would be a track, a trail of blood that we can follow, but we'll have, to, we'll have to have a look at that on the next kill. What I want to do now is just claim the animal, and you'll see how cool this is. This is so, what I'm going to do now is wrap it up there. Shot one is show you the firearm, the caliber, the winds, the shot distance, the penetration damage, the cavity damage. It penetrated all the flesh and everything like that. There is a lot of detail to this, and I cannot wait for this game to be released. It's not going to be long now whatsoever. The game comes out today. I just wanted to get some footage, 
show you guys credit goes to squirrel for everything you've seen in this video i'll leave this specific video in the description in case you want to come along watch what i skipped through and also the remaining 20 minutes of the video i didn't want to go through the whole video and ruin it just because it's so long there's going to be so many details you guys have to take in but check out this video if you want to see other content on the channel that's going to do it for this one i'll see you in the next video i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you for watching